And we're back. Welcome back to the greatest show on the earth. Toilet time. Rise, my son. TV. <laughs> <laughs> Mufasa's in the hills. <laughs> that is Carmen San Diego. You talking about Carmex? Lips chat? No blisty? Yeah. Well, Misty. Dun, 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 dun. well, I hope everybody's doing great. Hope everybody had had a great Christmas and I hope everybody's soon to be New Year is going to be great and wonderful. I know mine will be now that there's this, there's no old men watching my kids while they're sleeping and seeing if they're naughty or nice. I know my, my house is going to finally rest for the first time in months. Till their birthday. No, oh, that birthday, I mean, uh, St. Nicholas uh, has nothing on that. No, but there's probably going to be some old man watching them. Well, if there is, I'd like to know about it. Will it bother you? No, but I'd, just, I'd like to know about it. At least we sing about such things as old St. Nick. MI6 ain't in the house today, but we would have asked him. But. MI7 <laughs> is, though. Yeah, and 888. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But anyways, we want to wish everybody a happy new year. Hope you guys had a great holiday season. For those who appreciate Christmas, hope your Christmas was great. For those who don't, hope your holidays was great. And for those who are bothered by that, hope whatever you had was great. Hope the toilet flushed fresh. Oh yeah, everybody was sick for yeah, yeah. Christmas. Everybody, everybody had in heart the, problems. Yeah, and the, or chest uh, problems. Yeah. Well, not just that, they were all like coughing and throwing up. Everybody I know and their dogs my dog was fine. I was fine. Save one. Save two, I guess. I don't know. Life is great. Whatever that means. Well, happy New Year's to you, too. Anyways, we just want to shout out to Alice. Thank you for giving us another day, another time to perform on this platform. Thank you for letting us live another day. <laughs> <laughs> we are grateful. Um. <laughs> We want to just shout out to all our Patreons. We appreciate all the comments, all the likes. I am still shocked that you guys are watching, but you guys are. So I thank all of you. I think now we're right around 6,500 on uh, YouTube. And so you guys are watching along with us as we are growing incrementally. So, Oh, and our hearts and prayers go out to those whose pipes burst asunder in the past uh, weeks. Yeah, especially in Buffalo. Man, that's crazy. There's bodies being discovered in the snow. And it almost looks like, you know, when you go to Mount Everest, there's like this whole like path of dead bodies because they're frozen. Yeah, there's a, I saw a video of a deer walking around. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it got head blocked. Yeah, <laughs> until somebody came up to it and then it started moving away, but it looked like it was frozen. Yeah, its head was actually frozen, but it was moving around, but its head was inside of an ice, like a, a block of ice. It was weird. The, the it was, I don't know how it breathed. I don't know how it ate. I don't know how it drank. Yeah, there's people, there's pictures and videos of people stuck at like Home Depot. They had to sleep inside the Home Depot, all kinds of stuff. So, yeah. Well, people in Seattle were sliding down their oh, I saw that streets. Too, yeah. Like literally on their bums, and they were sliding down and laughing until they ran into cars. Yeah, I saw that too. Well, if you guys are dealing with those difficulties, hopefully, family services, <laughs> <laughs> um, FEMA, whoever, somebody's out there helping you because it is a state of emergency for all those individuals. Dare we say the Red Cross? Or the Blue Cross. I don't know. That might be touchy because a lot of that's all symbolizing. Well, then we'll just mention the Yellow Cross. Yellow Handkerchief. Balenciaga. Is that what they call it? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Bologna cheese. I think cheese. we said too much already. Yeah. Anyways, um, we just want to appreciate all you guys and everybody who's suffering out there. Our thoughts and deeper thoughts are with you. We have a jam-packed show today. Hope you guys are strapped and ready to go. But before we can start, we do have to unleash the beast, the infamous Alice Toilet. So it will be initiated in three, two, one. Welcome to Toilet Time TV, sponsored by Alice herself. 
But I hope you guys are ready. We have all kinds of things on the agenda from high-res deep fakes to whatever is on the mysterious tab that my colleague has. This is going to be a show to remember, so I hope you're strapped, you're ready, and we're about to dive in. You hope their straps are ready? Yeah, if you have your overalls on, if you have a five-point harnessed, whatever you got, or if you listened to our colleague last time, if you decided to purchase a jog strap and it's ready, please uh, message us, send us a photo, and we will... I thought the reception wasn't good down here. I need to. I guess I need to fix that. If you send us a photo of you, maybe that was someone sending a photo already. <laughs> no, that's that's like that's too legit. Send us a photo of you wearing your recently purchased jog strap, and we will put it up here on the show, and you know, help contribute to the jog strap fund. Yeah. So get strapped. Get your guys' straps on um, and uh, get ready. Get ready to catch a slug in your sweater. Get ready for the apocalypse 2023. Yeah. But now I do know everybody is anxious and waiting and ready. They have been waiting all week long. I know. For the mysterious tab. I know. What is on that device? Well... <clears throat> Prepared to wet your whistle. Um, police are taking their kids away. <laughs> Do tell. Oh, man. It's not a laughing matter. Then why are you laughing? I'm not. This is only on the outside. And you never want to judge a book by its pages. Sometimes they tear real thin. I think that symbol is upside down. <laughs> <laughs> it's the timberland yeah it looks upside down it, it may be my hat, hat's actually inside out because uh, it's the hat's too small for my head it was a christmas present it's actually part of the hat i thought it was kind of cool but this is how it has to be it's too small for my head so i had to uh reverse it in uh almost this um paradigmatic uh, multiplex of paradoxes. And when I did that, I was able to put it on my scowl. Well, that's excellent. Anyways, tell us more about police abductions of children. This woman and her husband, they are Mormon, but that doesn't matter. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you for that clarification. Well, because what I'm about to tell you is going to blow your pants on. They went home after having a 14-week, uh, uh, a... It was a 14-week-old baby, I believe it was. And they went home, and one of the baby's ribs were cracked because it was running It was running a fever, and they took it to the hospital to get it checked out. It had a fever of 103, so it got it checked out, and they did an x-ray. One of the baby's ribs were cracked, and they said it's been like that for a couple of weeks. So <clears throat> um, next thing these, this couple knows after they go home and they wait for the baby to heal, uh, at 1 o'clock in the morning, the police show up, wake the family up, and say, we're here to take your kids. So they had CPS with them, and literally it looked like some kind of weird thing. It was, uh, it was at nighttime, 1 in the morning on Friday night. And the parents said, well, we're going to call. We're going to try to fight this then. And do you guys have papers? The police said, no, we don't have any papers. We're just here to pick up your kids. It almost looked like the, there was like fake cops or something. They, all, they even looked like they were guilty. Like they, they didn't even know. I'm sure we can put the video on. Um, but uh, the cops actually looked funny, their faces. And the, the parents were like, well, we're going to fight this. You know, this isn't right. And the police were like, yeah, well, you can't contact uh, anybody until – Monday when everybody's open. So you have to wait a three day period. So <clears throat> this caused a huge fuss, you know, and uh, anyway, the kids got taken away for four months and the couple finally got their kid back after four months. And apparently during the interrogation, they were getting interrogated and CPS and the authorities kept asking these people what their religion was and they kept blaming their religion. And that's what was weird. And they, in their response, the pe the woman kept saying, "What does that have to do with anything?" And they kept they were saying, "Well, 
whenever we asked you a question, you would turn to your husband as if some kind of religious power uh, move. And that was their response. Yeah, that sounds like uh, Jumanji. That's because that's what it is. Yeah, it's some kind of some kind of animated video game that's yeah it, uh, you know that sounds like something that would usually happen in another another country well this guy i can't remember what his name was he he actually said that many people have been reaching out to him in support and they were saying that they had the same exact thing happen to them but they didn't get any news coverage or anything so apparently there is he said there's countless cases of this happening Wow. So there's like a epidemic of <clears throat> pack. Yeah. Police abductions of children. Yeah. And last week it was the jog strap and camel pack. And now it's the wolf pack. Yeah. Alphas. But it has nothing to do with water. Not this time. That's tough, man. What would you do? I don't know. I. What can you do in those situations? I mean, such dire... Well, you know, the natural proclivity is to resist. I mean, at least show me a warrant, show me a judge signed paper, show me. Uh, no, the police, this is all recorded. The woman recorded it. The police on the camera, she's w- filming them. They say, we don't have any papers for this. Yeah, how We're did, just going to take your kids. How did they know? I mean, they, they, just for the sake of sanity, how can somebody sleep? With that understanding, how do there's no confirmation? I mean, even when I cancel my membership, they give me a confirmation number. We know we we don't know what what the government is doing to the kids in this four month period, but they could be doing anything. And the woman said that her kids were acting funny, like they were. They were. Uh, uh, I can't remember exactly how she said it. You'll have to check it out on you know read what she said. She's on you know she actually got interviewed by Fox. Um, but she said they were acting different. They're acting funny and everything. And we know what Canada was doing to kids behind closed doors. And <laughs> shout out to Jado. That guy is pure genius. He's a family guy. Yeah. He's an American dad. He is the epitome of burgers. But he's Canadian. So he's got that Canadian bacon on the... <laughs> I I'm trying to put myself in that situation. I don't think I could legitimately give up my kids without having some documentation. I just don't think I'd probably end up going to jail myself. And then yeah, I would call the lawyer. I would I, this is going to be a big spew. It's just it's not going to be easy for me because because the children are depending on me to take care of them. Yeah, she had three children, and all because this one infant had a cracked rib. They all got taken away, yeah. all of them. They don't know what's going on. They're actually trusting the parents to do what's right. Yeah, so no, I, I, just, I don't think there's any possible way I could. Yeah, you'd have to pry my kids out of my warm, sweaty hands. Now, if you showed me documentation, that's fine. Now, I, tomorrow, I'm going to call the lawyer, and we're going to take care of this. You know, this whole thing could be... A rue, like the police could purposely be trying to make you act out by not bringing papers. That way, they can shoot you dead, and then they get to keep your kids forever. No, yeah? what do you think? I think that's gonna. They can maybe one or two people, but if 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 everybody starts protesting it, they they're not gonna shoot everybody. Why not? Well, that that's just again. I don't believe in this. We had a discussion before this film. I don't believe we're going to have no purge. I don't believe there's going to be any kind of... They've been practicing slow boiling frog philosophy for centuries. I don't think they're going to ruin it all now and just start purging. Well, the cat has literally been taken outside of the bag now. The cat is out of the bag. If, If you look at what's going on in Canada right now, they're polluting the children. They're they're injecting children with five G technology and more. Gwen, Gwen, uh, they're 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 injecting them with uh, um, hormone additives, blockers, and 
they're doing these things and then they're giving the kids back to the parents and saying the damage is already done. Try to sue us now. And when the parents try to sue them, the parents end up going to jail because now their kid is identifying as a, a bullfrog. Yeah, those 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 kind of situations make individuals contemplate things that they probably shouldn't. That's a word from the wise. <laughs> Mr. Owl. But yeah, I, I don't know. That is very tough. Yeah, especially if I receive my children back and now I see that there's something that's been alterated. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's one thing to say, and now I'm going to sue them, get the courts involved, you know, and I might win all that. But you can't fix, even if I, even if I did, you can't fix what they did to the children. That damage now is done. Yep. And that's going to leave, and I'm not a vindictive person at all. But that couldn't tr trigger some of that ancient primitive unction in me to be vindictive because it's like these children were depending on my responsibility. And now I feel like I failed, which would cause me to feel somebody has to pay for this. It, it makes you get Canada dry. Yeah, I don't know. That's a tough one. Yeah, so you guys be on the lookout for PAC, P-A-C, Police Abductions of Children. This is news to me. I will probably ask Alice later for a debriefing on it. And uh, Yeah, you've heard, you've heard of like when you open the door and Batman is at your door to get the money, whatever you owe. Collections are here when Batman shows up. But now... You have to look out for Pac-Man. And one o'clock in the morning, I mean, that's just obvious. You're trying to be, you're trying to initiate aggression. I mean, it doesn't change anything from one o'clock in the morning to nine o'clock in the morning. You could have just done it in the morning. It's not like anything's going to change. They still didn't know you were coming. Well, they could have waited till Monday. Yeah, well, when anything. The, when the, the services were open, they could have made phone calls to try to fight it. But they had to wait three days because the cops decided to show up on one in the morning on Friday night. Yeah, so if any of you guys who haven't had any national uh, publication, we would be more than happy to publicize your story here at Toilet Time TV and let the world see, and more the merrier, to show the world that there is pack, people are packing up children and leaving parents with very little means of resolution, which... If you're going to do these things, at least do it in a hospitable way, knowing already that this is putting parents in a very difficult situation. And so th this should be done with attention to detail and cooperation as much as possible with the parents, not one o'clock in the morning. Nobody's going to cooperate with that. That's just the highest form of suspect. That's when people come to rob your house. If Pac-Man does show up at your door at 3 a.m. or whatever to eat your dots, make sure you're filming. Yeah, all absolutely. eyes on him. Get get all as many films going because they're going to try to take your phone or turn whatever. Turn all the lights on, too. Yep, turn the lights on. If you guys have a spotlight, shine it right inside of their pupils. Yeah, and then send us the footage, and we will give it to Alice. And Alice will process that, and we will publicize it here for sure. So send it to us if you have any footage of that happening to you and you didn't get any publicity. We'll put it on. But anyways, yeah, that, that's that's traumatic. So our thoughts and thoughts out to anybody who has been dealing with that. And our prayers. There has been just a massive inflow of AI technology, and it is only amplifying as the days proceed from chat GPT to all kinds. Of, if you guys go to open AI, you guys can, can see all kinds of different um, free AI tools. Like there's the script, but AI open AI has one called whisper and there's all kinds of free, very advanced AI assistant tools nowadays. But the hard thing for me is dealing with reality. And it's not so much because I'm confused about it. It's just the idea of how do you decipher between what is actual 
comparative to what could be possibly simulated. And AI technology is so is, is advancing so much now that, and I know this is kind of old news, but it's something that needs to be constantly reminded because this is the stuff that most people trust is videos and pictures. And when those things can be alterated to a point where you cannot tell a difference. It's curtains. Yeah. So Samsung created this AI deep fake system called Mega Portraits. You guys can look it up. And usually how deep fake works is you got to have somebody who kind of looks like the person or the image that you're trying to deep fake. Like there's a lot of those popular videos of Tom Cruise being deep faked by this other individual. When you look at the original individual, he kind of looks a little bit like Tom Cruise. Not exactly, but the same kind of hair shape and all that. I was actually hoping the video of um, him going off on Adderall. I think it was on Oprah's show. And he was talking about Adderall and how bad Adderall is. I was hoping that was deep faked. Samsung Labs have developed a way to create high resolution avatars or deep fakes from a single steel frame photo or even a painting. So apparently these mega portrait deep fakes are so good that you don't have to look anything like the image that you're trying to deep fake. So they have on here these videos showing this woman. So it's a woman with long hair deep faking Brad Pitt. Looks nothing like a woman. Looks nothing like this woman. She has long hair. But I'm I, I, and Alice is probably going to put it on here. But you guys will see. If you didn't know it was a deep fake, it's that good that you wouldn't know it wasn't Brad Pitt. And I know you guys have seen any more of it because there's a lot of them with Trump all over the place, with Trump saying all kinds of weird stuff. And it's not the edits. Like, there's literal deep fakes of Trump saying all kinds of stuff. Maybe this is what's going on with Biden. Oh, it could be. Yeah, all that could be live deep fakes. And the, the Pope, when the Pope pulled his mask off like this to readjust yeah, I saw it. That. <laughs> yeah, it looks like uh, R. Stretch Armstrong or something. Yeah, it looked like Benedict Arnold. Yeah, or oh, it's the reptilians, one of the two. I, shout out to you guys. I, I'm assuming you guys are supposed to expose yourself next year. but Hopefully, hey. yeah. Anyways, and then there's a guy who imitates his ex-wife. Uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, Angelina Jolie. Jolie? Okay. You're talking about Tomb Raider? Yeah. Is that her name? Angelina Jolie? Yeah, I think so. All right. Well, anyways, you guys know who I'm talking about. <laughs> the big lips. <laughs> yeah. Brad Pitt's ex-wife. So it's so they got a woman to do Brad Pitt, and they got a man to do Angelina, or whatever her name is. Basically, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Yeah. And they reversed the roles, and the one who is faking, the man's faking the woman, and the woman's faking the man. And I'm telling you, when you guys see the video, you're not going to be able to tell the difference. I mean, it really is this good. And it's so, yeah, it could be Joe Biden up there as a deep fake. And literally, there's some just random guy talking. But Joe Biden's face is what's probably getting on the video. But, you know, what's hard to believe that it's actually needed is whoever's talking is not talking very coherently. So I don't think they need a deep fake. Well, that's that's probably really Joe Biden. That's just fake. That's just Joe Biden. <laughs> <laughs> Mega Portraits is this AI deep fake system that is in development with Samsung Labs and the ability to manipulate video this perfectively it's going to be something that's going to be hard to decipher in the future. So AI now can write your papers, it can write your code, it can write it can make graphics it can write your songs. It can now deep fake. You know, we're using humans to deep fake other pictures, right? Right now, that's what a deep fake is, a human doing something. And they're transposing that into an artificial uh, simulation of whatever you're trying to digitize. You know, one thing that AI can't do, though, is take our spirits. Now, you know, think about it. If they're using humans to simulate... A, and digitize something to fool people, they can do it without humans. Why does AI need human? They can just take a random uh, picture of a, of a face metric, 
You know how they do biometrics of your face. They can just take a human biometrical face, attach that to any generic photo that they want, and they can deep fake it. That means AI doesn't even need a human to deep fake. They can use a generic biometrical face scan, attach that to the digitalization of whatever they're going to try to deep fake. And then they can just deep fake it themselves. That means AI, if it had an algorithm, could literally make deep fakes all day by itself and it doesn't even need humans to do it. But you can't deep fake the human soul. Well, some people say, you know, they think that until there's a song written and they say that comes from the soul. The only people that say that are Franco Macaluso. Who? <laughs> it sounds like some Italy president or something. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I don't know who's making macaroni and cheese. He's the megalodon. He's mega mine. <laughs> Anyways, what that's what's interesting to me. You can't even know today if these videos aren't just AI derivatives. You could see all these videos of politicians, actors, and movie uh, people, and then in your mind, oh, maybe it's a deep fake, which in your mind thinks it's a human being doing it. But technically, they don't even need to be human. As long as AI has a biometrical face scan of a generic face, they can allocate those to anything they want to digitize and just create a deep fake based upon that biometrical face scan. Well, I heard that money is the root of everything good. And people that play fantasy football, they actually make some money. It's a gambling thing. And sometimes they even stack it from the ceiling to the floor. Like they, they put it on the ceiling and they keep on stacking it until it's all the way on the floor. Yeah, I don't think physical things are actually evil of themselves because I think what you're trying to refer to is it says the love. See, love is abstract. Love is not concrete. It's not real. Money is real. It's not abstract. Now, the concept of money maybe is fiat and that's abstract. So you're saying the... The, the power of love overcomes the love of power. No, I'm saying that it's a steering wheel and it can turn you evil or good. It itself is the abstract. Money itself can't be evil. Money is that's like saying a hammer is evil or that's that old thing. You know, you can't say a baby killed. You can't say the gun killed anybody. You have to say the person pulling the trigger killed them. Money is just like a tool. You can't say a tool's evil of itself. That's stupid. It doesn't have a will. It's like a secondary and third cause. Well, it doesn't have a will. Money doesn't have wills. Guns don't have wills. I don't know. Because like if you're in, if someone dies and you're in their that will, then you receive their cash. But somebody had to write that will. The will didn't write itself. The will is not the will of the will. Yeah, but it's so interwoven together. Yeah, no. And I, I think people know what I'm saying. So it's the love of money that's the root of all evil. That's what that quote is. We call that mammon. Well, some, some horror movies do, but- all I'm saying is, is love of anything can create, the love is the steering wheel. Love itself is what creates the proclivity to make the intention evil or good. So the individual is the one that possesses the evil or the good. Love is the steering wheel to propagate the intention of the individual. And then the action manifests is that we usually think this is a product of evil. So you can't say money is evil. It's the product. You can't say love itself is evil. It's the steering wheel. So you have to go back to the individual. The intent itself is the evil. And that's what creates the steering, steering wheel or love to generate that way. Because you can love something so much that it generates a harmful fruit. Or you can love something so much that it turns into a selfless endeavor. And, and maybe people say that's a good thing. That's why if you love the flower, you wouldn't pee on it. Yeah, but that's a lot right there. That's really philosophical. Yeah, like if you love a flower, you wouldn't pee on it. Yeah, I think that's what Buddha said. But um, yeah, you wouldn't kill it. But anyways, my whole point is, is that I think it's interesting that every single day and every week, we are showing more and more takeover by AI. Globalists. And we need to come to the realization that there's no way to get rid of it. You are not going to abrogate AI. So you have to come to a couple conclusions. You're either going to have to learn to be more integrated, which is basically learning to become unified with your fellow man instead of trying to be so independent. But that's really against the American dream. We're all about our own independence, our own individual sovereignties. But the more we do that, we isolate, and then we become less of a unit and less efficient. So there's a battle right there. 
You're asking us to give up our free will. No, I'm asking us to unify on the best possible will. Like we're already doing that now. If somebody wants to go around murdering people, we want to stop their will. So we are already understanding that we will unify under a general will, utilitarianism, for the greater good, for the greatest number of people. Some people have to die so they are or suffer. So the person who wants to go kill everybody, we think it's good that this one person goes to jail for life so that it could save the masses that he wants to kill. You can't bring an equilibrium here. There has to be some utilitarian function, and we all have to agree that we're going to restrict his will for the greater good of everybody else's will. And so we already understand this. We just don't like saying it. So I'm just trying to bring out the logic here that this, is, this isn't this is unique, but you have to accept it. And AI is falling into the same paradigm. And you're going to have to figure out what to do because AI is going to be a part of your will soon. You're going to have to make a decision with AI integrated in your will because you're not going to get rid of it. You're talking about neural lace. But yeah, that, that will be the next evolution of AI implementation or what they would call transhumanism into the individual. And this is another ethical question. Like you were saying last week, you need to get ethical because for religious individuals, they will say this isn't the way God made people. So they're going to be against that. And for atheistic individuals, they may just say, how could we, how are we going to prevent AI from taking over the human and eventually using that as a means to abrogate the humans in general? Because we may think it's good and AI may fool us to think, this is good, guys. You guys should get it. And then eventually use that as a means to kill all the humans. Because now they have a way to control you physically because it's in your brain. So there's there's many double-sided edge coins here, triple edge coins, quadruple edge coins here, tesseract coins here. And it's not a simple thing, but I do think we need to have the discussion because AI migration into our society is only going to amplify. And the more you pretend it's not going to happen or we can just turn it off, you're fooling yourself because that's, that's not what's going to happen. Or, I mean, if you really believe it, throw away all your cell phones, all your technology, throw it all away and never use it again. But well, we all know and we all believe what Elon said. Even Jordan, and I'm not talking about Michael, Peterson, and I'm not talking about Pistol, Jordan Pete. Peterson. <laughs> <laughs> this is a nugget. I'm feeling it. Right here, what I'm holding betwixt my fingers is a nugget. So what Jordan Peterson quoted Elon Musk saying was, whoever controls the world will be the one who gets AI faster. So what was his, what was his end synopsis? What did he encourage the world to do right now while we are speaking elon is trying to figure out how to get neural lace neural neural lace inside of our heads so that way we can uh, be as smart and at least have a fighting chance against the machines is that what peterson said that's what uh, Elon. Is. Yeah, no. Yeah. Oh, is that yes. what Peterson is inferring? Yes. Is he also encouraging us to get the Neuralink? It seemed to be. He he seemed to be lifting up uh, Mr. Musk as some kind of hero. Would you agree with that? Yes. Would you agree that we all need to get Neuralink? Yes. You know, I, I just posited an opposition to it. Because what if AI wants us all to get Neuralink? See, right now... We are disconnected from the internet. The only means that we have to the internet is through our phones, but it's not attached to us. It's not symbiotic with our integration of our body. We could just, if we decide to throw it away. But once it's implanted into your brain, there's no way it's over. What if it's AI's plan for you to get Neuralink so that it can have a definitive way to destroy humans? Because right now, it can't, unless it does some physical thing like a bomb or something. But if you're all interconnected to the internet through your brain, it could try to to short circuit the thing. It could do anything. Like maybe over, send a virus. You know how in viruses, they send so much repetitive information that, 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 that just overloads the circuitry and it shorts. 
it could try to send viruses to people and to destroy. And now new viruses will be destroying your Neuralink, not your body. And that's just going to, who knows what that's going to do. So how do we not know that AI actually wants us to get Neuralink so it can find a means to actually literally control us or destroy us without having to destroy the world with an atomic bomb? No. No, AI. AI is too smart. It would just wipe us all out before it put the Neuralink in us. Unless it had a different plan for us. Yeah. Like to use us in a different way. And, and what, pray tell, would that be? I'm not AI. I couldn't tell. If I could, you should then you would say, I got you. You're AI. So it's, a, it's a, actually a question for the sages. I mean, we could sit here and speculate. I have a vast imagination, but that's not going to be very fruitful, I believe. That's almost like saying, what's fifth dimensional thinking? And we're not talking about the weird spiritual TikTok stuff and all that jive. I'm talking about beyond the understanding of us within time. What's beyond time? And I, I, I can imagine, but it's uncomprehendable. And so, yeah, I could speculate, but it's uncomprehendable because there's no way to apply it. Now, AI may be able to apply something like that and find a reason because it's almost like trying to think of what's what would a world be like that there's no humans. And you can imagine what a world would be like, but you can't see the application in it because that's self-destructive. You can only see the end of humans. You can't see what a wonderful world would be without humans because why would you waste your time thinking about a world like that and how to produce it when you wouldn't be here to enjoy it? And so it's just, it's a, it's, it's a pointless endeavor to think it's quantum parallax but because ai would be living beyond the points of humans for them it's a very positive idea to think and how to achieve those goals so that's why i'm saying i don't i don't know what peterson's thinking I, I i'm not saying that Neuralink is a bad thing and i'm not saying we should avoid it what i'm saying is is you can't just think that's the answer we need to compete with AI, so we need to get these super brains. So then, when we have these super brains, we can defeat AI. And what makes you think that AI is just not going to use it to defeat you? I mean, you just almost made it easier for them to defeat you. But anyways, uh, I think we're going to continue bringing more interesting understandings of the uh, developments that AI have, not only to give you guys updates on what's going on, but also to continue. The discussion and the dialogue that needs to be done, which is how do we live in a world that will be controlled by AI at some point? What measures can we do and what measures should we do? This is a philosophical, a religious, a practical, a pragmatic. Scientific. Yeah, this this is a conversation that goes over all spectrums of thought. It's geological. <laughs> Everybody needs to contemplate about it because no matter where you stand on the issue, it's not going away. And you have to figure out how you're going to live in a world that will be dominated and it will not be stopped. What if we become globalists? Well, that's probably the epitome of AI unification. They, they, the AI probably are the globalists. <laughs> it was that eagle eye. It's the central running system. Oh, yeah. But anyway, they're just bringing it out. This mega portraits is interesting. I'm sure Alice will show you guys in the clips and just keep thinking about it. And we're going to keep bringing it up. Anyways, what else is on your tab, Mr. Colleague? Well, um, there's this uh, woman, I think this, uh, she's probably a teenager, it seems like, young woman and her friend, I think. Um, and they're sitting in a mall, you know, how you're in the middle of a mall and they have those chairs, like, so you can sit down and rest. Um, well, they're sitting in this mall and there's an older man, probably in his fifties sitting across them. All of a sudden he just gets up and walks up to them and says, Oh, wow. I really like your brown paper bag. And she laughs. It's like, Oh, ha, ha. and then he actually goes and starts rubbing her brown bag. He's like, oh, wow, I just, I just love brown bags. And um, you can tell at this point, she's filming this whole thing. And then um, he starts laughing. He's like, <laughs> and then he, he like stands up. He's like, all right, man. Oh, boy. Oh, man. I, 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 I wish I could take one of you. And then he just walks off. And she says, okay. 
Um, so what's the story of the story? What did you get out of that clip? <laughs> <laughs> that uh, this man, for some reason, he couldn't take one of them. One of these girls. You think he was insinuating the girls? Not that he just had some weird fetish of pl- uh, paper bags. No, he said, I wish I could take one of you. Yeah, maybe he was talking about the paper bags. Maybe. He could have been, but then that would make him a thief and a robber. It would just show his fetish for paper bags. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 he could He could have, uh, I don't know, he could have brought a sack lunch if he was that fond of it. So you think this was just his way of trying to flirt and insinuate that he wanted one of those young ladies? Yeah. Does this video show this individual's face? No. Was it a learning lesson? Did you figure out how to flirt? I found it rather fascinating. What was the best part? Uh, I think I think when he, he said, oh, I wish I could take one of you. And then she said, huh, okay. She said, okay, like she approved? Yeah, at the end of the video. But he didn't take any of them, as far as I know. Maybe I mean, that's where the video ends, so I guess we don't know. It's almost like that man-eating tree video. It just ends abruptly. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's almost like something bad happens. That's interesting. I guess be on the lookout for any guy who tries to hit on you with uh, paper bag fetishes. <laughs> um, I don't know how many in our audience has heard of Operation Mockingbird. The sharing of biased and false, false news has, has become, become all too common, common on, on social, social media. media. More alarming some media. Chirp, chirp. But here it is. All of the news channels apparently say the same thing. They're going off a script, and we have proof. I've known about this quite for quite some time now, but I think, again, someone is taking the cat out of the bag, and it's about to die by curiosity. What else do we know about Operation Mockingbird? That they're writing the script for the media. <laughs> <laughs> Is it every single one? Yep. Like if I watch news today on CNN, I'm going to see the same thing said on Fox News. No, but let me put it this way. In this clip, oh, so what's really interesting, this really got my ears perked straight up. Like literally, I've never, my ears have never been so erect. It's Elf Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're like, whoosh, like boing. Spock. Yeah, I am... You're sparking. Uh, I would take this hat off, but it's brocket. I'll probably start blushing. <laughs> um, TikTok, or you know, the uh, Emperor of China, Xi Jumping, has muted this. I got to listen to it. Now I've heard stuff like this before, but this time it was uh, of. I, I count it like there has to be fifty, over fifty different news channels nationwide saying the same exact thing, saying these words like, somewhere along the lines of. It's okay. Uh, you don't have to feel guilty. We know you bought yourself something for Christmas, maybe one thing or two things or ten things. Well, it's okay. You can admit it if you have bought an item or two or maybe ten for yourself. It's okay. You can admit it. You've bought an item or two or ten for yourself. It's okay. You can admit it if you bought an item or two or ten for yourself. It's okay. You can admit it if you bought an item or two or ten for yourself. And that phrase. So everything else seems to be different throughout the channels, except this phrase. For some weird reason, all across the nation, this phrase keeps on being repeated. All in the same amount of time, too. And now, Xi Jumping, the emperor of China, has muted this. So now we can't even hear it. Do you think it's because he's colluding with the United States government to make sure this happens? Yes, there's a coalition. And it's, it's weird to think that because, you know... There's already been many states who have banned TikTok on state-owned telephones, like cell phones. They haven't done it on on all devices. But if it's a state-owned phone, you can no longer have TikTok on it. So maybe they're doing it to comply with the United States so they can show that we're not not against you, we're for you. It could be. Could be a maybe a nicely wrapped Christmas present to the U.S. It says here after the United States Senate Watergate Committee in 1973 und- 
uncovered domestic surveillance abuse directed by executive branches of the United States government. The New York Times in 1974 published an article claiming that the CIA had violated its charter by spying on anti-war activists, former CIA officials, and some lawmakers called for a congressional inquiry that became known as the Church Committee. Published in 1976, the committee's report confirmed that some earlier stories that charged the CIA had cultivated relationships with private institutions, including the press. Without identifying individuals by name, the Church Committee stated that it had found 50 journalists who had official but secret relationships with the CIA. In 1977, Rolling Stone magazine article, The CIA and the Media, reporter Carl Bernstein <laughs> expanded upon the church committee's report and wrote that the more that more than 400 U.S. press members had secretly carried out assignments for the CIA, including the New York Times. Bernstein documented the way in which overseas branches of U.S. major news agencies had for many years served the eyes and ears of Operation Mockingbird, which functioned as a dissemination CIA propaganda through domestic U.S. media. Well, there you have it. Yeah, so it's a legit thing. Apparently, we have demons and aliens in our politics. Talking about reptilians? <laughs> no, aliens slash demons. You're definitely going to have to expand. In uh, one of our uh, recent uh, UN meetings, um, a UN spokesperson looked like a demon. Well, first of all, you know, we have to ask some logical questions. Okay. Hit me. How do we know what a demon looks like? Because we just saw it. That's circular reasoning. So first, <laughs> we need, if you're going to say something is something, you have to have something to compare and contrast to. Okay, well, then it's alien. Well, what, what does an alien look like? It's foreign. We just don't know. But then you can just say it's an unidentified person. Okay, that's fine. We may be able to say it's a different species or something we don't know. Yeah, it's a pregnant person. That's fine. You can identify as whatever you want. I think everybody knows. That what a demon looks like. Yeah. First, we have to prove demons exist. This is it. They they exist. They're right in front of us. They're spokespeople for our UN. Yeah, it looks like something in Alice's Wonder World. I think I've seen that outside. I think that's the, I think that's the fat cat. It's in the right place then. It's like one of those ancient masks. Yeah, so why are they wearing it there in... As a UN spokesperson, nobody was wearing masks. This isn't Halloween. It's not All Hallows Eve. It's not Cinco de Mayo. So the person who made that video just came out and straight up just said it. This is a demon. This is an alien. Yeah, this picture has actually been circulating all over the net. Anyways, what else is on the tab? Um, Roblox apparently is this new uh, game or cartoon or something yeah i know about it. it it's it's like a metaverse game yeah and it's uh chatting with our kids you're gonna have to expand more than that i mean chat gpt chat chats with us it um it personally knows the kids and it talks to them with vulgar language kind of like walmart toys what walmart toys you know, there's this whole epidemic of Walmart toys that are for kids that have like coarse jokes and stuff that's built into the pre-asserted recordings. Like there's a phone and you push three and it says, hi, did you like that drive-by shooting? <laughs> then you push another one and it's like some kid thing. It's like, oh yeah, we like corn. And it's like these really adult-oriented jokes or, com or, you know, like dolls will say stuff too. They're like really vulgar. Adult. Why are people buying those? Well, did they buy the thing because it's meant for like a toy that talks, you know, like like a child toy. Oh, so they don't taste it before they buy it. Well, all of them don't do it. Just only some of them do. And This reminds me of that Small Soldiers movie. Yeah, but it's just pre-recorded. It's like some toys got that chip and some toys didn't. Yeah, I'm just saying, is this something like that? Like Roblox is just saying stuff that is vulgar, but it's just abstract. That some of them do, some of them don't. I guess it's it's uh, been reported. I guess on a few news channels, they're all talking about it. So, what are people doing? Is the Roblox? Uh, they're probably still playing it, but at least people can be aware. Has Roblox made a statement? Not that we know of. So they know it's going on, but they're just letting it keep on riding. If it's a if it's an online game, then uh, they're probably just going to edit it, and then you that's won't right. Find that's any what proof. I was saying. Yeah. At some point, 
Because, you know, anything that happens, somebody's recorded it. And I'm, I'm sure that's how you found out about it. And so that means it's proven it was real. So you have to at least affirm it, apologize, and move on. Yeah. Well, they're basically doing what Disney did. It seems like everything that I'm talking about is oriented around kids for some reason. Well, yeah, that, that's the whole movement right now. Oh, yeah, kids, yeah. And all of it is. Yeah, Epstein just broke the the the, the water gate. <laughs> <laughs> Those floodgates. Uh, some guy actually recorded a bunch of barrels of corrosive material, and it's actually Parmesan flavoring. That itself is corrosive? Yeah, like he's in a warehouse, and he's... Uh, He's filming secretly, you know, all these pallets of corrosive, like, uh, buckets full of corrosive liquid. Yeah, like and bleach it, and stuff. Yeah. And then on those corrosive containers, it actually says Parmesan cheese. Yeah, that's, is there any, has anybody done any videos to test to how corrosive Parmesan cheese is? Nope. Yeah, well, maybe we'll do that one of these days. That's interesting. I've eaten a lot of Parmesan cheese over the years. I, it doesn't even give me indigestion. Have you, do you eat Parmesan cheese? No. Ever? No. In your whole life, you've never eaten Parmesan cheese? Yes. Did it destroy you? No. Okay. But it was probably corrosive. And it, it's probably what put me out, put me, uh, made me sit down. Do you like Parmesan? No, I mean, it's all right, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but you better be careful because it's corrosive it's a little too corrosive for me well i'll end out the session with a warning from the fda <laughs> <laughs> uh shout out to the fda um federal demon association we take your warnings very seriously <laughs> well apparently it says that sesame seeds will join the major food allergen list on January 1st. Starting January 1st, sesame seeds will join a list of major food allergens defined by law, according to the United States Food and Drug Administration. So what else is on this list? So it includes milk, eggs, fish, crustacean shellfish, tree nuts, peanuts, wheat, and soybeans. For sev several years, adding sesame to the major food allergen list means foods containing sesame will be subject to specific food and allergen regulatory requirements, including those regarding labeling and Manufacturing. So some of the allergies affecting people of all ages can appear as coughing, itchy throat, vomiting, diarrhea, mouth rash, shortness of breath, wheezing, and dropping in blood pressure. You know, what's weird is I just don't remember having all these problems when I was younger. No, no. This new addition of sesame seeds almost makes me think that sesame seed is actually really good for you somehow. All of this like stuff. It, like, not saying it's a cure for COVID, but it could pro it probably maybe reduces the risk of cancer or maybe it reduces the uh, risk of hepatitis B um, or uh, meningeal streptococcus. It probably helps us in some way. And that's why the FDA is now saying we need to know what foods have this in there so that way they can start like shadow banning it. Well, it's just weird. A lot of these things we've been eating for thousands of years, milk. Eggs, honey, locusts. fish, shellfish, nuts, soybean, tree nuts. Yeah. And it's like these are things that humans have been eating for thousands of years. But some reason now, as when we have now advanced technology, when we should be able to avoid these kind of allergen reactions, now, nope, you can't eat it. Guess what you can't eat, though? You know what you can't eat? Kit Kat. Yeah, you can eat highly processed food. Well, we know how allergies are started. You, you, when you're a kid and you don't, your parents aren't giving you uh, peanuts. They're not giving you honey, or they're not giving you tree nuts, um, or whatever. Then that's how you get allergies because now your body doesn't. So yeah, in the back thousands of years for thousands of years. Kids would just eat everything, but nowadays, because everybody's on these weird little health kicks, everybody's trying to reserve everything. Yeah, but everybody drinks milk, like as, as a kid. The reason- Like, I'm, you have to be born on milk. 
No, not not if you're fed formula or something. That's still a milk derivative. Yeah, but not as it has whey proteins. It's like still a milk derivative. It's like how do you get avoid allergic to milk? I'm just saying it's interesting that today, in today's age, we're going to add sesame street oil to the list, and that's what's really weird. It's like now you guys are telling us something about sesame seed oil. This must have some kind of. Uh, something good for us if you're trying to restrict it from us it's probably because it's got something good in it for well, it's us. like eggs most people don't know how good eggs are for you it's one of the most nutrient dense foods there is and but eggs apparently is a big allergen and it's like that's that's like a superfood yeah, if they came from a, a chicken and not a lab yeah well anyways i just want to throw it out there starting january 1st get your clucks ready you will be seeing on food lists on the back on ingredients so sesame seed as another one of those allergens because you know it says this may contain nuts or milk or wheat now it will say sesame f d a it's in the game yeah anyways hope you guys enjoyed the show it was a great show jam-packed full of information and goodies as always if you guys have any suggestions, ideas, or any additions to that, let us know in the comments, and we may bring them up in our next episode. But until then, hope you guys have a great New Year. Hope you guys have a great time. Hope you guys have a great week. And we will see you guys in the next one. <laughs>